The hockey stick graph published by Michael Mann way back in 1999 came under a lot of criticism, but a recent paper published in Nature shows that not only was this hockey stick graph basically correct, but the situation is much worse than we originally thought. The hockey stick now extends back 9,000 years, and in this video we'll see why that's important. The paper globally resolves surface temperatures since the last glacial maximum by Osman and others that was published recently in Nature probably is the most important climate change paper published in the last 20 years for the following reasons. First, it provides with high confidence global surface temperature information since the, since the end of the last ice age about 20,000 years ago, and it does this with a time resolution of about 200 years. It also does this both temporarily and spatially. In other words, we not only have a time chart of global temperatures, but we now know how those temperatures were distributed over the surface of the Earth. This paper shows that the Earth has warmed more since the start of the Industrial Revolution than in the previous 9,000 years. It also shows that the medieval warm period from about 950 AD to 1250 AD was a local phenomenon in the North Atlantic, Greenland, and parts of North America and Europe that did not contribute significantly to the global average surface temperature during that period. And the reason that that's important is that the medieval warm period is often cited by climate change skeptics to show that climate change that we're seeing in today's era could be due to natural causes not related to the burning of fossil fuels. Since the hockey stick graph by Michael Mann was first published back in 1999, there has been a lot of work by paleoclimatologists to obtain information that would allow them to reconstruct better temperature graphs than the original 1999 one. Uh, this figure is from a recent paper published by Michael Mann in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences uh, shortly before the Osmond paper became available. And in it, uh, the red line is derived from actual temperature measurements. The blue line from the, is from the 1999 version of the hockey stick. Uh, there are three uh, data sets from proxy temperature data, and the yellow line is a statistical reconstruction that shows the best fit to all the data. Let's talk a little bit about uh, temperature proxies. Obviously, uh, if you go back more than a few hundred years, thermometers weren't in wide use, and temperature data had to be inferred by uh, proxies. There are a wide variety of of proxies that can be used to infer uh, temperature. Uh, for example, tree rings is one, uh, but there are many, many others. And if you're really interested in learning about the different kinds of uh, temperature proxies that can be employed to understand what global temperatures were back in, in previous centuries, uh, Wikipedia has a good article on temperature proxies. But in, in, in this graph, what we can see is that the, the errors associated with the original uh, man hockey stick were quite large. Uh, the more recent information from additional paleoclimatology uh, tends to uh, agree quite well with, with man's original data but it also uh, reduces the error bars somewhat. Uh, here the errors uh, span are two sigma errors, two standard deviations. That means that they show results with a 90% confidence uh, uh, level. And in this graph, which extends back about 2,000 years, you can see that there's a slight dip in, in the temperatures uh, between uh, a thousand years ago and the start of the Industrial Revolution. That's sometimes referred to as the Little Ice Age. Uh, 
temperatures on average decline by about two tenths of a degree centigrade, not a whole lot. But then once the industrial era, era started uh, and we began to burn more fossil fuels, uh, global average surface temp temperatures really shot up pretty rapidly. And that's, that's the conclusion we, we can draw from this slide. This is figure one from the Osmond paper. It shows the distribution of proxy temperature data that they use to obtain spatial and temporal, temporal temperature information dating back to the last glacial maximum, which is about 24,000 years ago. They combined two climate model simulations with six proxy temperature data sets using probabilistic modeling to obtain their final reconstruction. And if you look carefully at this graph, you can see that uh, proxy data was available from a, a, a large part of the uh, surface of the Earth, but certainly not everywhere. And by using a Bayesian probabilistic analysis, they were able to extend this uh, temperature proxy data into a, uh, a graph of uh, temperatures all over the planet and do this in 200 year intervals. This is figure two from the Osmond paper. It shows the resulting global average surface temperature for the past 22,000 years, along with three snapshots of the global temperature distributions with 2000 year resolution. There are several important features that I'd like to point out on this graph. First, if we go back about 18,000 years ago, that was the end, just about the end of the last ice age. Uh, temperatures across the globe were about eight degrees centigrade uh, cooler than they are today. And it took about uh, another few thousand years for the earth to warm up. And then around 9,000, 10,000 years ago, uh, the temperature stabilized. Uh, if you look carefully at this graph, you can see that between about 9,000 years ago and uh, up to the present, just before the start of the Industrial Revolution, temperatures rose very, very slowly, uh, about half a degree in that 9,000 year period. And then at the end of the period and the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, temperatures shot up rapidly. In, in less than about 140 years, temperatures across the planet rose by a full uh, degree centigrade. That's twice as fast as they had risen in the previous 9,000 years. Spectacular uh, information. That's telling us that when we started burning fossil fuels in the industrial era, era, we really changed the behavior of the planet's climate. What can we conclude from these results? First, temperature changes over the last 24,000 years are linked to radiative forcing from ice sheets and greenhouse gases and changes in ocean circulation and seasonal insulation. The global mean temperature has risen slowly but steadily by about half a degree centigrade in the last 9,000 years. The global average temperature has risen about twice as much in the last 140 years as it did in the previous 9,000 years. That is absolutely spectacular information. Um, it's, it's, it's really awe-inspiring to realize that we have, by burning fossil fuel, raised the temperature more in little over 100 years than natural processes did in the previous 9,000 years. I hope you have found this video interesting and important. Uh, if you have, I'd appreciate it greatly if you share it with your friends and family. In addition, uh, I would also appreciate it greatly if you subscribe to my video channel. You can do that just by clicking in on my picture in the circle below. Thanks again for watching.